Programmable logic devices are fabricated with structures that implement logic functions and structures that are used to control connections or to store information specifying the actual logic functions implemented. These latter structures require programming, a hardware procedure that determines which functions we implement. There are several different programming technologies, fuses, anti-fuses, mass, single-bit storage element, and control of transistor switching. Fuses, anti-fuses, and mass are permanent. We can't undo them in case of a mistake. Let's begin by looking at fuses. The oldest of the programming technologies include fuses and anti-fuses. Fuses which are initially closed are selectively blown out by higher than normal voltage to establish open connections. The pattern of open and closed fuses establishes the connections defining the logic in the circuit. Anti-fuses are the opposite of fuses. They contain a material that is initially non-conducting, open. Anti-fuses are selectively closed by applying a higher than normal voltage to provide a pattern of open and closed anti-fuses that define the logic. A third programming technology for controlling connections is mass programming. This is done by the semiconductor manufacturer during the last steps of the chip fabrication process. Connections are made or not made in the metal layers serving as conductors in the chip. With some older chips, you used to be able to rub off the black paint to see the structure. Hence, Congress introduced Suji generous legislation to protect mass works. The fourth programming technology is the single-bit storage element driving the gate of the MOS in-channel transistor at the programming point. If the store bit value is 1, the transistor is turned on, and the connection between its source and drain forms a closed path. If the storage bit value is equal to 0, the transistor is off, and the connection between its source and drain is an open path. Since storage elements can be changed electronically, we can reprogram these types of devices. Finally, let's look at control of transistor switching, which is based on storing charge on the floating gate. Stored negative charge on the floating gate makes the transistor impossible to turn on. The absence of stored negative charge makes it possible for the transistor to turn on if a high is applied to its regular gate. Since it's possible to add or remove the stored charge, these technologies can permit erasure and reprogramming. Two approaches using control of transistor switching are called erasable and electronically erasable. Erasure uses exposure to strong ultraviolet light source for a specified amount of time. Once this type of chip has been erased, it can be reprogrammed. An electronically erasable device can be erased by a process somewhat similar to the programming process, using voltages higher than the normal power supply level. The third approach is flash technology, which is very widely used in flash memories. Flash technology is a form of electronically erasable technology that has a variety of erase options, including the erase of stored charge from an individual floating gate, all the floating gates, or specified subsets of floating gates. Some, but not all, programmable logic technologies have high fan end gates. In order to show the internal logic diagram for such technologies in concise form, we use a special gate symbology applicable to array logic. Instead of having multiple input lines to the gate, we draw a single line. The input lines are drawn perpendicular to this line and are selectively connected to the gate. If X is present in the intersection of two lines, there is a closed connection. If an X is not present, there is no connection. In a similar fashion, we can draw the array logic for an AND gate. Now let's look at distinct programmable device structures. We'll describe each and indicate which of the technologies is typically used in its implementation. These type of programmable logic devices differ in the placement of programmable connections in the AND or arrays. We have read-only memories, programmable logic arrays, programmable array logic, and field programmable gate array devices. Programmable read-only memory, PROM, as well as flash memory, has a fixed AND array constructed as a decoder and programmable connections for the output OR gates. This form appears to be a structure for implementing a sum of min terms equations for the outputs. It can also be thought of as implementing a truth table. The programmable array logic, PAL device, has a programmable connection AND array and a fixed OR array. The AND gates are programmed to provide the product terms for the Boolean functions, which are logically summed in each OR gate. The most flexible of these three types of programmable logic devices is the Programmable Logic Array, or PLA, which has programmable connections for both AND and OR arrays. The product term in the AND array may be shared by any of the OR gates to provide required sum of products implementations. Now let's take a look at the details of read-only memory. A read-only memory is essentially a device in which permanent binary information is stored. The information must be specified by the designers and, and is then embedded into the ROM to form the required interconnection or electronic device path. Once the pattern is established, it stays with the ROM even when power is turned off and on again. So the ROM is non-volatile. Here we see the block diagram for a ROM. 
The inputs provide the address of the memory, and the outputs give the data bits of the stored word that is selected by the address. The number of words in a ROM device is determined by the fact that K address input lines can specify two to the K words. Depending on the programming technology and approaches, read-only memories have different names. ROM, Mass Programmed, PROM, Fuse or Anti-Fuse Programmed, EEPROM, Erasable Floating Gate Programmed, and EEPROM, Electronically Erasable Floating Gate Programmed, and Flash Memory, Electronically Erasable Floating Gate with Multiple Erasure and Programming Modes. This figure shows the internal construction of a 32 by 8 ROM. The unit consists of 32 words of 8 bits each. There are five input lines that form the binary numbers 0 through 31 for the address, which are decoded into 32 distinct outputs by means of a 5 to 32 line decoder. Each output of the decoder represents a memory address. The 32 outputs are connected through programmable connections to each of the eight OR gates. Each output of the decoder is connected by programming technology. This particular ROM is programmed with the word 1001011 in memory address 1. Since each OR gate has 32 internal programmable connections, and since there are 8 OR gates, the ROM contains 32 times 8 is 256 programmable connections. In general, a 2 to the K times N ROM will have an internal K to 2K line decoder and N OR gates. Each OR gate has 2K inputs, which are connected through programmable connections. ROM programming typically uses programming software that isolates the user from the details. A ROM stores computer programs, in which case the binary code produced by the usual programming tools such as compilers and assemblers is placed inside the ROM. ROM can be programmed by tools that accept inputs such as truth tables, Boolean equations, and hardware description languages. In the case of flash memory, it can also accept binary patterns representing photographs taken by a digital camera, for example. In all these cases, the input is transformed to a pattern of open and closed connections to the OR gates needed by the programming technology. Thanks so much for watching. In the companion presentation, we'll look at programmable logic arrays, programmable array logic devices, and field programmable games.